On today's show, we first will have a look at Eric the Bay. Okay, I'm sorry to have Eric the Bay on. And then we will have a look at Globusters. Yes, Bob and his friends. And then a short thing about you must be aware what you're saying. Use the wrong word and we prove that space is fake. And in the end, we have the end. Okay, let's start. I have been looking at other platforms than YouTube where many flat authors uh, present their videos with what they think is proof of a flat earth. A popular person to uh, repost videos from is Eric DeBay. He's on all these platforms, but many flat earthers think he has so great proofs. Uh, let's look at the video that I see that many uses. It was published on YouTube by Eric for two years ago, but it's still going around in the flat earth community. A copy of the book The Lighthouses of the World and a calculator are enough to prove that the Earth is not a globe, but an extended flat plane. The distance from which various lighthouse lights around the world are visible at sea far exceeds what could be found on a globe Earth 25,000 miles in circumference. NASA and modern astronomers claim we are living on an oblate spheroid 25,000 statute miles in equatorial circumference with a curvature of 7.935 inches to the mile varying inversely as the square of the distance, meaning in 3 miles there is a declination of nearly 6 feet, in 30 miles 600 feet, in 300 miles 60,000 feet, and so on. Therefore, if we wish to prove or disprove the validity of their convexity claim, it is a fairly simple, straightforward matter of measurements and calculations. For example, the Dunkirk light in southern France, at an altitude of 194 feet, is visible from 28 miles away. Spherical trigonometry dictates that if the Earth was a globe with the given curvature of 8 inches per mile squared, this light should be hidden 190 feet below the horizon. The Port Nicholson light in New Zealand is 420 feet above sea level and visible from 35 miles away, which means it should be 220 feet below the horizon. The Arago light in Norway is 154 feet above high water and visible from 28 statute miles, where it should be 230 feet below the horizon. The light at Madras on the Esplanade is 132 feet high and visible from 28 miles away, where it should be 250 feet below the line of sight. The Cordonin light on the west coast of France is 207 feet high and visible from 31 miles away. This one is really easy to debunk, and Eric gave us the a clue why is not a proof of a flat earth. And you don't need a curve calculator to debunk Eric's bullshit. Eric gives you the height of the lighthouse and the distance you can see the light from. In reality it's not the height of the lighthouse that is interested, it's the height of the light. Uh, but obviously Eric don't understand the problem with these numbers because if you have a lighthouse where the light is 60 meters over sea level why this limitation how far you can see it? It makes no sense at all if we live on a flat earth. So thank you Eric for proving the globe once again. Lighthouses has been important and used since uh, the old Egyptians, so almost at least 2000 years. And if you are at sea, 
you have this knowledge about how far you can see a lighthouse. So Eric's claims are ridiculous and silly. And it's typical him. He reads a book and he tries to use it as some kind of proof for his nonsense. Some weeks ago I made a video about uh, Kelsey with the YouTube channel 74 Gear. He's the pilot who challenged flat earthers. He offered to them to hire him and his plane and flew from South America to Australia over Antarctica. And of course, Globusters with the fake commercial pilot Bob Nodell have had this on their show. Let's hear a bit from them. Um, I know, Jaron, you said something about you wanted to talk about, and I think this is the video uh, that Flat Earth Banjo USA, Japan and Brazil put out. Um, and this has to do with this Kelsey 74 gear g guy who is allegedly a 747 pilot. Alleged pilot, according to Bob. Uh, Kelsey started his channel four years ago. And this is the first time he's bringing up your and others cla crazy claims about the shape of the earth. So alleged pilot, he have tons of videos about evasion. That's the subject and he knows what he's talking about. Oh dear. And he's talking about putting together a flight that's basically going to go, you know, over Antarctica, supposedly. And uh, I know you wanted to talk about that, and I did watch it. So I'm going to let you kind of start off with your thoughts about that. Sure. So the other day on my show, I was talking about how you know, sometimes I want to put these guys' feet to the fire because he makes, you know, very cocky claims that it's very easy to book this flight and he can do it anytime and you can charter his flights and you can fly anywhere you want. So things like that, when you just say things, people hear them and, and believe them real quickly like yeah what do you mean nobody can go to antarctica this guy just said that anybody can fly over antarctica so in practice though none of these things actually happen right and i'm sure the funny thing is this guy's flown everywhere all around the world everywhere around the globe he's been everywhere uh but i bet you he's never flown over antarctica so he's just saying because he assumes that if he charters this flight he'll get to fly over antarctica so i i feel like let's hold him to it and uh, i have you know i'd be all open for uh, raising funds for it and you know I saw the comments in my in my um, latest video and it's I mean it's almost like borderline embarrassing how how afraid of everything that people are and I get it I get it okay and I'm not saying that this flight's gonna take place this is what you have to realize is that we are forcing them to have it take place but everyone says they're just gonna put all these flat earthers on the plane and crash it um, you know I, I, I just don't believe that I don't think that so I you know for me I'm like go ahead if they want to kill me and a bunch of flat earthers well I can't speak for everybody else but I'll say go ahead kill me if that's their plan is to pretend they're gonna do some flight around the world and then crash it um, like that's gonna really help their cause right it's gonna hurt their cause <laughs> if they're telling everybody oh we can do this flight look at we're gonna do this flight and we get everybody to sign up and then it crashes I mean that's gonna do more damage than people think and I'm not trying I'm to be down. Yeah, see, I mean, Austin's like me. We're not, we don't have we don't have uh, uh, lips. Uh, I don't know what you want to say. We got some cojones. We're ready to go. Uh, Austin's on board with me, so we got two people. Anyway, I, I would jump right on it too, Jared. See, there we go. So we got we're we're not all afraid of of everything. So we're not all afraid of the boogeyman. Of course, Kelsey is planning to kill you all and parachute out of the plane somewhere over the Amazonas. Oh dear. Who did come up with that crazy, idiotic theory? But if I think more about it, I'm not surprised that you make up this kind of idiotic theories. You're afraid of the truth. So you try to hide behind, but then, hmm, if, hmm. Um, so to me, I'm like, let's do it. And 
I was all for it. And I was even explaining that the distance that the flight would have to travel to do what he's saying, in my mind, would be a minimum of minimum 20,000 miles, maybe maybe more. And the, his flight that he's describing is only 7,000 miles. And I think I heard him say it would take uh, 14 hours, if I remember correctly. I think it should take more like 12. And you know, if we look online, we can't even find that flight because that flight doesn't exist. There's no such thing as the flight that he wants to take, which is from Buenos Aires uh, to, um, uh, what was it called? Um, Melbourne. So, Melbourne, here, yeah. so I was thinking about that and I was like, okay, I'll, I'll still challenge him on that because I still think there's enough discrepancy that it would show one way or the other, um, vast problems with the, you know, the amount of time that we, sh it should take. Like I've seen online it's somewhere it says that it takes 18 hours, which is a joke because 18 hours over 7,000 miles means you're going like less than 400 I, for, we figured it out on my show but no planes going less than 400 on a long trek like that and so if that was the case and even he had to admit that i would say okay so you're telling everybody that the reason this flight's going to take so long is because we're going to be doing 400 miles per hour the whole time um it's just ridiculous so especially because we know that you can get trade winds going either way down there obviously they're predominantly one direction with the high speeds anyway getting to bandro's video I watched, uh, I didn't you know he put it out when I did my show, and then I was like, oh, Banjo put something out. So I go and watch him, and I. T and Jeronism have consulted the aviation genius, Banjo, Brazil, USA. Oh dear, that fool. He have been debunked more often than I changed my shirt. Take his offer then, if you can raise the money. Wolfie6020 will uh, buy a ticket. Me too. See you in Florida. What he says is, if you are this pilot who says, I can charter a plane and go anywhere, why not do this flight instead? So if you kind of go forward to where Banjo is laying out his, um, let me see where it's at. Go a little bit further. Uh, you can stop there for a second. Put it right there, yeah. So, you know, Banjo's here is talking about... Uh, this flight now banjo says we don't have a problem with the uh, santiago chile to sydney flight and i would agree because i think it works out the time wise well with the flat earth i mean especially when you add the 200 250 mile per hour winds we know that the flight is way faster going sydney to santiago than vice versa so i've never had a problem with that flight either i think it works on a flat earth map um his idea of buenos Aires, which is a little bit obviously east and then coming to the south so you'd have to come up underneath Australia to hit Melbourne uh, and plus the way he describes it he's going to stay close enough to Antarctica that we'd be able to see it the whole time so obviously the little flight path there with the red arrow isn't going to really work uh, and I just don't think it can be done in the time frame that the globe would call for so but go yeah. ahead go forward a little bit one, more okay but before I do that one thing uh, JQ just uh, thank you for the super chat by the way JQ he says Buenos Aires to Perth not Melbourne and I think Melbourne was was the pilot's idea uh, what's his name uh, Kelsey yeah. and then and then it was actually Eddie who said no how about we do this to Perth right um, isn't that wasn't that his counter proposal who's Eddie Eddie is splattered banjo oh, I thought his name was banjo <laughs> Should do what I know. Okay. Uh, so go a little bit for is that so wait, he says he wants to go where? Well I don't think he wants to start in Buenos Aires though. No no no, but but it was it was going to be it was going to be Eddie was saying that it she should make it Buenos Aires to Perth. Um, because that's you know because Melbourne you said there there wasn't an issue with that, but Perth there's a big issue with it. If you look at Kelsey's video one more time, and this time try to understand what he says, if you hire the plane, you would decide where to start and where to land. It was a suggestion from him. So if you want to go to Perth instead, he will do it. Book the damn tickets and we come, me and Wolfie and I'm sure some more from our side from the real side no no okay i can't stand these fools anymore let's move on this is a clip that floats around among uh, flatters channels on uh, facebook and so on uh, at have done so for several years and this is according to flat earthers a proof of that space is fake 
You, you strike me as quite a practical person. You're a pilot. I mean, mm. you, you know, you deal with uh, sorting things out. Do, do you ever have moments when you're, you're there and you're looking out of a window and your thoughts stray sort of elsewhere? It's a slightly more philosophical things about where, who we are and what, uh, our place in the world and all that stuff? Yeah, absolutely. When you look out at the Earth, especially when you're in space for long periods of time, there's a couple of things that uh, I think about. One is the atmosphere looks incredibly flat, fragile, almost like a contact lens over an eyeball. Par Astronaut that in a live interview is using the wrong word and then change it. That's a great flat earth proof according to a lot of flat earthers. But when flat earth fanatics like Eric de Bay talks about how far you can see a lighthouse, they don't react because flat earthers don't manage critical thinking. Sad, but true. Okay, let's move on. Welcome to the end. I will make some changes. One is that I will release two per week instead of three and it will be Tuesday and Friday. It's several reasons for that. One is to get more uh, time to produce uh, members videos and other type of videos and to be get better quality on the episodes. And a third reason is that it's quite hard to find flat earth content for three episodes a week. I do not plan to leave the coverage of flat earth fools, but since my uh, episodes are divided in three section sections, uh, I can if I not have enough flat earth material, change some of the uh, sections to other content. For instance, uh, photography, filmmaking, or something completely different. Okay, that was all for this time. Have a great weekend and see you on Tuesday. Bye.